Here goes. Welcome to We Talk Sports with the Big ID. Frank Dibudia Lapa is my name. Um, what's happening in the world of sports, especially in football? Um, the Super Eagles have been given their due by Mr. President. The man knows how to reward and host his guys, so that's good. Uh, congratulations to them. They all got an MON and the coach also. And um, the players are getting back to their base. So the big news is that Nigeria is now the third most technically gifted team in Africa. You see how I sold it? The third most technically gifted team. The team in Africa that has the best defense as it, as it was seen in the AFCON. The team that has the current African Footballer of the Year. The best player or the most valuable player at the AFCON, Truce Their Con. The African Footballer of the Year, Victor Osime. The revelation of the year, Victor Wabali, or Stanley Wabali, rather. You see, how, you see how I'm selling it? That's what I expect the NFF should do. But anyway, that's one of the biggest, one of the biggest issues going on. And the other issue that is on board is whether Joseph Pesciaro should stay or should go. Um, Waka or pass. Somebody said that. I don't know. I don't know. That's one of the biggest issues going on, or biggest news, or that's one of the biggest conversations in sports right now. Yeah. And um, honestly, you can't go through the dailies this today or yesterday and today without having to see um, something about Joseph Pesero staying. In fact, if you check, I think it was a complete sports or BSN. My guys at Sports Village Square uh, said that, okay, all of them, Algeria are very much interested in relieving us of Jose Pesero. Interesting. It's in all the dailies, honestly. Algeria wants Jose Pesero uh, to take over from their coach who has uh, been relieved of his duties. And of course, the contract talk of Jose Pesero is also there. But there's this very interesting news, a piece of news, which you will see on the screen also. And it's from ongonigeria.com. I do free publicity. Um, it says here, a chieftain of the Nigerian Football Federation revealed that his likely replacement, that Joseph Pesero, won't be an indigenous coach. Um, knowing that Emmanuel Amunike was, I'm sure it was an old interview that was conducted, and then the reporter being smart decided to bring that in. Whether it's true or not, Emmanuel Amunike has not said anything, but I think somebody's trying to fly a kite concerning that. But anyway, he said that since uh, the story of Emmanuel Amunike being interested in the job, Mohammed Moiz, uh, Mohammed Moiz Suleiman of uh, ongo.com, ongo.nigeria.com says that uh, um, a certain chief turn revealed that it's not going to be an indigenous coach. Now, this is where I'm coming to. If Pesero doesn't stay, then we will get a coach who can adequately fit into his shoes. That's the key word there. If Pesero doesn't stay, we have somebody who will adequately fit into his shoes. Um, if you check on go, on go, on go Nigeria.com, Mohammed Dasuliban, Moiz, he wrote that. He, got that. I just read it out to you. You know, so that's the big news. Nigeria has moved up the rankings. Question is, what are we going to do with it? But that's not the crux of this matter for today. That will be another just for another day. And the fact that uh, Joseph Pesero is still, is wanted by Algeria, interesting. And the fact that we are still discussing the fact whether Joseph Pesero will go or should stay as the coach. I think it was a Brina FM or Brina uh, paper or one of their website that said that Taribo, I've complete, one of the dailies anyway, I, I'm not particularly sure right now, said that um, Taribo where said that he doesn't want Joseph Pesero to stay. You see, that's the news that is going around. And uh, let me, but that's not what I'm thinking. It's, it's, it's a fantastic, Round of play. We must actually say who would lead or who should come, whether Pesero should stay or not. But if you go with what um, Mohammed Suleiman said in ongonigeria.com, they've already made up their minds. Their minds have already been made up. They want Joseph Pesero to stay. 
In fact, there's flying a kite up there that Algeria wants him, and we should go. Because Algeria has money, they will pay him more than what we're paying here. The reason why I believe he's going to stay is that the hierarchy like him, just like he what um, this unknown NFF chieftain that Mohamed Suleiman is saying. When he signed the contract before going to the Nations Cup, Joseph Pesero was given one year extension and under the condition they would, that extension would be considered if he makes it to the semi-finals and voila. The Super Eagles, despite my trepidations and my alarming call, made it to the semi-finals at the expense of the likes of um, Senegal and uh, Egypt and Morocco, who were highly ranked. The Super Eagles actually made it to the semi-finals and made it to the finals. And we were all hoping, I do, and we're all hoping, despite my predictions that we will not win and we were not favorites, by the second round, we're already favorites. That means they made it to the semi-finals and they made it to the finals. So Jose Pesero has already achieved his target. So he, in fact, is due for a return. So what's the discussion about? It's not a discussion. Their minds have already been made up. And they're only flying these kites because they just want you to discuss about it. But the real thing here, <clears throat> I feel this is a diversion, a serious diversion. Why are we not talking about the technical report of the Nations Cup? If you send your child to an exam, which is what we went for, this is Joseph Pesero's exam. He qualified for the exam. Where is the technical report card of the Super Eagles? You know, we need to know why, because somebody asked the question, and so many people have been answering, and I've even given my own opinion. Why is it that we had the African Footballer of the Year, the most lethal striker in Italy, one of the most sought-after strikers in the world? How come we could not, Victor Osime could only score one goal? How come? Well, if you look at that, we we'll also look at the defense. How did we manage to ensure that we, we, did, we had four clean sheets after Equatorial Guinea? Uh, um, um, Cote d'Ivoire could not score against us. Guinea-Bissau could not score against us. Cameroon could not score against us. It took a penalty for South Africa to score against us, and then we considered two against... Um, against the Cote d'Ivoire in the final phase of, of it, but we scored. How were we able to manage it? That's kudos. We need to study it. We need to understand why. How did we get such a high performance at the defense? What about the midfield? How is it that we took more defensive-minded midfielders than creative uh, midfielders, attacking midfielders? How come Iwobi did not perform so much so that um, Nigerians began bullying him on the internet space. And for me, I think you guys are cowards. You're all, you're all behaving like bitches. For all of you that have been cyber trying to like put a finger on him, you're all bitches. How would you do that? That guy played so well at Fulham, he was welcomed. They, they welcomed him and then you guys are not asking the right questions about how he played. You guys are bullying him that he didn't perform well. And that's the reason why I said this in one of my, one of my other videos. Don't blame the players. Look at what he was told to do and the style of play. Is that what brings the best out of him? Why are we not talking about the technical report from the Eagles adventure at the Nations Cup? So let's not put the cap before world. Let's stop making these mistakes and get carried away by all this, all this frenzy of uh, Joseph Pesero wants to go, or whether he doesn't want to go, or Algeria wants that. That's, 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 that's wrong. That's playing with our emotions. And that's playing with Nigerians, our intelligence. Because the reason why we know that Victor Osime has a conversion ratio is because the data and the statistics is there. It is published, it's there for everyone. Check any of the sites, it's there. 
You know his strengths. You know his weaknesses. So tell us. Give us the report. We deserve it as Nigerians because you took us on an emotional ride. People died. People lost money. Let's not even talk about uh, the budget, if we will do a review of the budget of what the, let, before we go into that, because even in Ghana, there's an inquest on that. We deserve to know. But let's start with this. Let's not get carried away by this. Um, Nigeria moved up to 88 places to third in Africa. Haven't you been fifth before? What did you do with it? But that's another story for another day. This is the main thing I want us to face. Tell us, where is the technical report? Can you give us the technical report? How did Osime play? How did the midfield play? How come our midfield was weak? How come Osime could not score? How come our defense was very solid? What are the strong points of Mwabali? This technical report helps us create um, a value down the line so that our youth teams can study, the youth team coaches can study the system that took us to the second, that took us to second position. Improve on it. That's how Tiki Taka was formed. That's how the, 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 the Barcelona way was created. That's how the Dutch system was created because reports came in data was used to make improvements. So before you come and start telling us about whether Joseph Peshero is to go or not, you don't even need to tell us. Publish the report. Publish the technical report. Let's see it. How did the boys do? Give us the data, the percentile, the statistics of everything. Freedom of Information Act says that I have the right to ask for that. So when you tell us, it is even us that will tell you that we want Joseph Pesciaro, not you. Don't come and tell us that Algeria wants him. If he wants to go to Algeria, he should go. Algeria will pay him better. Don't sell us a dummy. That's the first act. After meeting with Mr. President and getting your MON award, congratulations, you did well. What is your technical study group saying? The technical department that studied the nation's cup, what is he saying? That is what should give us a right to choose whether Pesero should stay or should go. Not you flying a kite. Not you giving us that mumbo jumbo. No. Don't do that. Do the right thing. Give us a report of what the Eagles did or how they performed. Give us our strengths and weaknesses. Show us so that we plan ahead. It's 2005 is around the corner. Uh, 200, uh, 2025 is around the corner. Morocco is around the corner. Tell us what next. How do we improve on this so that we can improve? So that we'll know how to prepare. So that we'll start targeting the kind of players that we will use. So that we'll build on the defense. So now we have a good defense. Where the African footballer was, we had, we, we, they emerged an almost watertight defense. Tristan Kong, Marshall, Leader. Defender, do you understand me? How come any time after Victor Osime plays, he's gassed out? You need to ask these questions. You need to give us an answer to this. This guy played, played. I said in one of my uh, one of my podcasts that during the tournament, if you caught Victor Osime, you he would bleed green and white. Because he gave everything. I said it before and I'll say it again. Most top stars in Europe will, will refuse to play that kind of game. Forage like that up front. Because it drains you. And that's why you saw they were limp in the finals. Cote d'Ivoire had a system and they could dominate and there was no plan B or C. But that's not what we are talking about. We're talking about checks and balance. Don't come here and tell about Joseph Pesero wants to go, he wants to stay. Who cares? If we want him to stay, we'll tell him, ah, Baba will stay. And then we'll negotiate. And then after that, we start talking about how do we improve? And then we'll talk about how do we start making money from this? Budget, how did you plan the money? These are the things we should be talking about. You're coming to sell kind. And the only reason why they will want to say they won't want to answer this is number one, you don't know the hell what I'm talking about. 
about the technical report. Number two, if you actually know what I'm talking about, you probably don't believe anybody would want to ask. I'm asking. Some of us are asking. And number three, if you believe we're going to finally ask, you never thought about putting somebody there or the technical department did not realize they were supposed to write it or give a technical report. And if the technical department didn't realize they were supposed to submit a technical report and publish to Nigerians or tell Nigerians how it went down, because that's what it should be, go look at it, there's a technical study group for every group. You probably think that even if we ask, you can just ride it with this wave of Pesero wants to go or Pesero wants to stay. And that will take our mind, imagination off. That means you think we're not intelligent people. And number five, we just don't care. Even if we ask. We ask. Where's the technical report? Tell us. Let's do. Then we will clamor whether I should say Pesero should go or should stay. And then we will clamor whether this system should be used or not, and then use it for younger teams. Big thank you to our sponsors, DGRZ Home Tutoring Services. Big sponsors. Um, and then we also want to say thank you to Jack Autos. I, I, I'm getting a lot of support coming in for We Talk Sport. You should hit that subscribe button, like, and subscribe, and then put that notification on so that every time we drop um, a new content, you'll see it. Frank E. Dilmudia Lapa, that's my name. Talking sports, that's my game. And I'm the greatest. I want to keep this moment always being.